Hi, it has been three years since I showed you some radioactive samples. I have now found even more radioactive stuff, so it's time for a new video. Some of it you may find beautiful, others just disturbing. Throughout the video I'll be using a Soex Defender. It's tiny, but still has a larger, more sensitive Geiger tube than my Gamma Scout, making this good for detecting radioactive samples with low activity. Let's start with some natural occurring ores. Here is cerite, which is found in both the cerium and lanthanum rich baryons. This is cerium rich, and although cerium has three natural occurring radioactive isotopes, some of the detected radiation is probably from traces of uranium or thorium. After a few minutes, the sample's average is 0.7 microsieverts an hour. Not very strong, but still five times more than the natural background radiation at my house. This monocyte is also cerium rich and contains thorium. Being careful not to contaminate the Geiger counter, I detect an average of 0.45 microsieverts an hour. Thorionite is very rich in the metal thorium. So even though this is just 2 grams of the mineral, I have no trouble detecting a lot of radiation from it. Its average is 37 microsieverts an hour, close to 300 times the natural background radiation. Next up are these 6 micromounts, also with natural minerals. They are very small samples, and with this Uranus Binite sample, I can't really detect anything. This Maricotti sample is a little stronger though. Three point seven in average is not bad for a micromount. My sample of the pale green Schreckingerite is also easily detected as radioactive due to the uranium content. Nickel zipperite is also rich in uranium and scores an average of around 0.9 microsieverts an hour, even in this tiny amount. The closely related natrocyperite sample is better and scores quite high, close to 9 microsieverts an hour. But that is nothing compared to the uraninite. Ninety microsieverts an hour. This is a hot sample, but uh, I'll show stronger ones later. From some micromounts, let's go to my largest radioactive sample. I literally found this in my backyard as part of a stone wall. Let me just defrost it for you. Granite can contain natural isotopes of potassium, uranium, and thorium, making it a little radioactive. Even the insensitive Gamma Scout picks up an elevated level of ionizing radiation near this sample. This rock is a clear reminder that our Earth is a radioactive place. There's quite a lot of uranium and thorium underground. Even lava from volcanoes can contain low levels of it. These pendants are advertised as containing crushed lava stone. And they actually are quite radioactive. Hmm, this is a little more than I expected from lava. This one's average is around 1.8 microsieverts an hour, also on the back side. Let's try another one, maybe the first one was a fluke. 
Uh, no. This is clearly radioactive too. This one's average is around 1.7 microsieverts an hour. Here's a different brand and it's a lot weaker, but still above background radiation. I am not here to judge whether this is healthy or not, but personally, I wouldn't wear pendants that emit ionizing radiation. And I'm not radiophobic. Oh, look at those cute critters. This pink pet tag looks like a perfect match for them. Although I'm not really sure it is. Fair enough, it's not stronger than a large piece of granite, but why not choose a non-radioactive one? I am a little disturbed by all these pendants, tags and even pyramids with low levels of radioactivity. Would people still buy them if they were marked as radioactive? Healthy or not, this pyramid scores an average of 1.8 microsieverts an hour. The next sample is uranyl acetate. This is used as a negative stain in electron microscopy. Uranium is opaque to electrons, so it can stain the background, making the specimen to be seen more visible in the electron microscope. And this is of course also radioactive. This sample was most likely prepared on depleted uranium to keep the activity as low as possible when used in the laboratory. It still scores an average of 22 microsieverts an hour though. Let's move on and discover what is hiding in this can. Yellow-orange uranium trioxide. I like this color. It reminds me of the Gamma Scout and a little of the uranium glaze on this vintage pottery. These were made for food, but are a little radioactive. Try guessing how high the Geiger counter will go near these. I'll show you soon. First, let's try the uranium trioxide. Thirty-three microsieverts an hour in average, one of the better samples. But just for perspective, here's the pottery again. Did you guess right? These are still considered safe to eat from, just avoid acidic food and drinks. I don't use them personally though, I prefer the non-radioactive for my food. 50 microsieverts an hour. I think it's time to really put the Geiger counter to the test. To do that I will show you 5 of my pitch blend samples. Pitch blend is uranium oxide and basically it is uraninite. But pitch blend is an older term and often used when the uranium oxide is more scattered in the mineral instead of nice groups of uraninite crystals. This first sample is one of my smaller pieces of pitch blends. The seller's specifications are in the top left corner. It may be small, but at 92 microsieverts an hour, it still packs a punch. Let's go a little larger. This one even has a thin layer of gold-like pyrite on it. This is a highly concentrated sample. Watch in time-lapse how the readings keep climbing. It stops at 320 microsieverts an hour, but it could be a little more. Let me show you why. This piece is much larger and stronger, an estimated 200 grams of uranium oxides. Notice how this one quickly rises to 320, but not higher. 
The Zurich Defender is supposed to go to a thousand microsieverts an hour, but mine stops at 320. Alright, let's try the Gamma Scout instead. The Gamma Scout behaves even worse. It quickly gives up and drops to zero. So this piece is too hot for my Geiger counters. So the measurements on the two final pieces are not really surprising, but here we go. I really like the looks of this one, and it's strong too. Enough to max out the Defender and zero the Gamma Scout. It is finally time to reveal my hottest sample. A pitch blend monster with over 400 grams of uranium oxides. It looks like a normal boring rock, but with the clicker turned on on the Gamma Scout, you can hear that it is screaming when near this rock. This should obviously be treated with respect, but it's still low radioactivity compared to, say, the inside of a nuclear reactor. In the description, there's a link to a video where Byronaut 23 finds a tiny fuel fragment from Chernobyl, and it puts out 115 millitivits an hour. So this rock is perhaps only 1% as intense as that tiny fuel fragment. Anyways, I'm not looking for anything stronger than this piece. Speaking of Bionerd 23 and Chernobyl, I actually won her video contest and she sent me these souvenirs from Chernobyl. Quite odd that such a place is now a tourist zone with its own souvenirs. Do you think we'll ever see something similar in Fukushima? <laughs>